Hey, what is up everybody and welcome back to another video. All right. Don't know why this is red. You bastard. Um, <laughs> I went on and it's just it's not turning green and I and I can't figure out why. It won't even let me on the little RGB thing. Which actually looking now, I've just noticed I am actually wearing red so it kind of fits completely unintentional though. It will return back to green whether it likes it or not. But anyways, um today we're going to be watching another death battle. Because why the hell not? You know what I mean? And this one is going to be controversial no matter what. Stuff like Death Battle where you've got one beloved character versus another beloved character is always going to have people argue. The fandom are going to argue night and day as to who they think should win. Well, this person's done this feat. Well, that's nothing compared to what this person's done. Well, once in the data books, it said that this person was this powerful. So... You know, that's that, and they've never been stated to do with this, and this person's moon level, this person's hyper outerversal level. It's fucking ridiculous, man. The the arguments people get, especially when it comes to one that we're watching today, anime related, they get very goddamn passionate. So you I, I knew full well. I haven't looked down in the, the comments yet because obviously I'm assuming at some point I'll get a spoiler as to who's won. How dare Aizen win over Madara? How dare you think Madara would win Aizen? So, obviously, I, I can't go down there, but I can well imagine it's a goddamn battlefield of people defending their favorite universe. Which I'm going to jump in on right now. Madara's going to slap his asshole. I'm, I'm telling you now. That's purely, again, just because I, you know, Naruto is, you know, as you can see, Naruto's kind of my, my favorite show. Ever. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not go I'm, I'm going to try and not be biased, though. I'm go I, I am going to try and not be biased. So, when it comes to Bleach, I still haven't seen uh, the Thousand Year Blood War, but I've seen all the way up to then. And then, before the Thousand Year Blood War was even conceived as being a thing, I started to read the manga and got up to the part where, spoiler alert, but it is in the Thousand Year Blood War now, so you should have seen it if you've seen season one. I got up to the part where uh, Ichigo evaporated the lake. Uh, and had his duels on Pocto. That's where I got up to, and then I uh, I never read anymore because I heard that obviously the Thousand Year Blood War was coming out, and I'd rather watch it than read it. So I um I decided to do that. So that's the only part I've got up to. Whereas with Naruto, as you can well imagine, and you probably know because I speak about it all the time, I've I've rewatched Naruto numerous times, well into the double digits. I have all the DVDs there. Not that I've ever opened them because they're gonna sit there and be pristine forever. Uh, I also have all of the movies and everything, so I, I've seen Naruto a lot, a lot, a lot of times. But I'm also not one of these people that like dives into the whole uh, like data books and having a look around because I've never really had a reason to, unless I made a, a video like this where I was comparing two characters. That's the only reason I would have to, and obviously I don't do that on this channel, so I've never had a reason to. I'm going from like what's been stated in the manga and stated in the anime and. All this different stuff as to who I think would win. And in all fairness, it could be a hilarious twist where it gets all the way to the end. And if you know Bleach and you know Naruto and you know both of these characters, Madara has uh, the Sharingan and the Renegan, which are proficient, especially the Sharingan, in Genjutsu, which is illusions. Uh, Aizen has uh, Kyokosuigetsu, which is an illusion-based technique. So this, they could have a massive fight and then all of a sudden be like, bam, guess what? It was never real. They've both been chilling on a beach while you've been watching nothing. So, uh, which would be pretty funny to be fair. But I really don't know who's going to win this one. Again, it could maybe death battle or bias. I have no idea. But I'm from like what I think who is going to be stronger. Uh, I really don't know. The only thing I can think of the top of my head, stated-wise, is the fact that when Aizen used the Black Coffin technique, I can't remember for the life of me what it's called, I'm fairly certain in the anime, because I've never read the manga for it, I'm fairly certain in the anime he says that it's it transcends time and space and what have you, and it's basically like a, a black hole, to which Ichigo just completely fucking shattered that with one arm. So if that move is that strong... I can't think of anything in Naruto that is that Madara has done at least. Because um, the only thing was like when 8 Gates guy went to kick him uh, using Night Guy in the his 
staff like bend and he said he's bending space but other than that i can't really think of anything and of course there was the whole thing with kaguya creating the 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 huge truth seeking orb that said apparently was like its own dimension in itself uh but again that that's that's to do with kaguya that's never here nor there because we're not talking about kaguya but uh yeah i, I just i don't know i don't know I'm going to go with Mardera because he's my favourite character and I know I've just went on a rant about how stupid that is and people will complain and everything. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to go with. But I don't know. It can go it can go either way. But we're about to find out. I don't know why I'm rambling for five minutes. We can just watch the goddamn video. Yes, we're about to find out. I hope you guys are excited and looking forward to it. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I also found it funny as well. Um, just when I was setting everything up to, to do my little transition into, into this part. Uh, there was like two quotes that randomly came to mind, which I thought were kind of hilarious because they're completely conflicting to each anime, which was uh, Madara's badass speech about nothing ever goes to planned in this accursed world, which is a badass speech, by the way. Uh, and then you flip over to Bleach, and of course, everything that ever happened to Bleach is, well, at least the original series, was a part of Aizen's plan, which means everything goes to plan in his world according to his whim. Uh, which of course it didn't, but you know that's which is hilarious. But yeah, um, it, it became a massive meme about the fact that everybody spoke about uh, you know anything that ever went wrong was like yeah, it's just just a part of Eisen's plan. I've seen that thrown around everywhere, even if it's not anime related, which I, I find kind of hilarious. Yeah, let's let's go, let's go, baby. Madara Uchi, Madara. the legendary messianic shinobi from Naruto. Sosuke Aizen, the soul reaper who stood upon the heavens from Bleach. We may dream of glory, but these two have the will to power to take it by force and claim a seat among the gods. They're the biggest, baddest anime bosses around, and not even death can stop them. Ghost versus zombie. Let's go. Let's go, Please baby. And I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a, a death, death battle. Ten years. Endless destruction. Countless dead. A plot to conquer the planet. The ninja world was at war. For the fourth time, only one man could save humanity from itself from beyond the grave. The same man who orchestrated this war in the first place in order to end all wars mm -hmm. forever. Madara Uchiha. There are no such things as villains in Naruto. It's only broken heroes. Which, I mean, you know, when, when you hear things, like when you, when you see the villains and they're, they're giving their big speeches about like why they're doing what they're doing, you kind of agree sometimes. I mean, even with Pain uh, or Nagato, or whatever you want to say, um, he gave that big speech about why he like he's doing what he's doing and the fact that the the great nations basically waged wars with each other and they all converged into his land and ravaged it every single time just so they could make a bit of profit and he asked Naruto what his answer would be to stop things like that and even Naruto didn't have an answer that's that's growing up right there that's realizing shit this guy's got a he's got a point uh, and then again you get with Madara of course, he, he kind of went around in a kind of fucked up way. He was going to put everybody in a, in a Genjutsu, which he succeeded, if it wasn't for Naruto and Sasuke and uh, Kakashi and, and Sakura, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, he, he totally succeeded. And he was going to make everyone gets their like, perfect dream. But then again, it's not really real. So is it, is it, is it a good thing to do? I don't know. I don't know. From birth, war was the only thing the young Madara knew, and there was no ninja he liked fighting more than Hashirama Senju. They're basically ninja- Daddy Rama. Belonging to opposing clans, Madara and Hashirama were forced to battle each other for years, all the while dreaming of a better future. Their bromance eventually overcame their clan's differences, and the two groups merged, creating the village of Konoha. But Madara wasn't satisfied with Hashirama's dream of peace through cooperation. He desired an immortal peace through total domination. Everyone else thought that was crazy, so he bounced, and then he came back to wage war against the village he helped mm -hmm. build. Well, that didn't last long, huh? Madara's megalomania was perhaps fated, considering he is, in fact, the reincarnation of the demigod Indra Otsutsuki and the inheritor of his immensely powerful chakra. 
basically physical and spiritual energy that makes ninja magic. Madara specializes in I do love ninja magic to be fair. Shoes, which just seems irresponsible to put those together like a gender reveal party waiting to happen his wood is especially impressive considering it's the only style of elemental jutsu that can create life why are you looking at me like that <laughs> uh, can even use his goonbai to absorb ninjutsu I'm sure and return it right Choji's expansion center. jutsu can create life as well if you know what i'm saying armies with just a friggin fan Madara has torn apart hordes of ninja without breaking a sweat, taking a beating. And that's not just a fan as well. I mean, once, and even it has abilities. Kage, some of the strongest shinobi in the world. The Raikage is even stated to be fast enough to move at light speed. And even weaker ninja like Orochimaru have dodged literal photon beams. But Madara's greatest tool is the one born from his very bloodline. The eternal Mangekyo The Shari EMS, God. baby. His magical eyes massively enhance his perception <sighs> down to the cellular level, allowing him to predict movements, see the flow of chakra, and summon the mighty perfect Susano. The Sharingan can also cast a Genjutsu that'll trap anyone that looks at that it That looks fucked up in the manga, by the way. even break them out of those same illusions. In Sasuke's case, even ones as strong as Itachi Tsukuyomi, which can warp your perception of time. Itachi used it on a fellow Uchiha and made her live out her entire life in the span of one one hundredth of one one thousandth of one one millionth of a second. And when she died in the illusion, she died for real. If Sasuke could break out of it, Madara could do Yep. Uh, that wasn't just any shinobi, by the way, if you didn't know. That was his girlfriend. He, uh, he put her in the, the Tsukiyomi when he was massacring the entire place. Made her live out an entire life with him. Uh, them having kids and growing old together and everything. And then when her brain snapped back to, you know, reality, her, her brain obviously was thinking, shit, I've just lived out, whatever, eight years of my life. It's time to go to sleep. Permanently. And that's exactly what it did. It's like the, the nicest way to kill someone, I guess. You you kill them in a split second. A split of a split of a split of a second. And then, but in her mind, she's just lived out the perfect life with you. So, you know, it, I, he's, he's, he's a nice guy. Despite killing the, the all of them. Too easily. You can't tell me he's not nice, all right? Ashirama sells onto himself. He now would always have a piece of his Romeo inside him. <laughs> this is my ship, Wiz. Stop looking at me like that. He not only gained a healing factor strong enough to regenerate from having half his body vaporized, but also the terrifying Rinnegan. AKA the big chungus of all eye magic. Yep. The ringy eyes let Madara absorb chakra and ninjutsu, create invisible limbo clones, see and remove your soul from your body, and so But it was only the one clone meteors. until he got um any more fucking powers. The six While the paths power. Lacks some of the Sharingan's unique abilities, he can swim and he's between them at will. Second Renegan. After tearing the ninja world a new asshole, Madara was finally defeated in a climactic battle for the ages by his BFF. And thus, the life of a legendary shinobi came to an end in the arms of his one true love. Or did it? You did not because Madara, of the Izanagi. Crazy, but just bear with me. Fearing a defeat in battle, Madara set a time delay jutsu that would posthumously rewrite reality and bring him back to life. And it worked! So Madara tricked another Uchiha, Obito, into witnessing his best friend murdering his other best friend. Then he tasked Obito with manipulating the world into another war. Meanwhile, he gave his own Renegon to Nagato with the goal of getting it back after he was brought back to life the second time with the Outer Path because he died again. Make sense? Nah, that'll never work. <laughs> You're right, it didn't. So Obito went out and got the Renegon back from Nakato's corpse, because he died. Then Kabuto brought Madara back to life, and he got his eyes back from Obito after some backstabbing. Then he sealed the awakened Tentails within himself in order to gain ultimate power and create the world's greatest nap time ever. <gasps> Look what you people have done to him. You, you sick individuals. Would be awesome, but those dinky eight balls of doom are so lame. Don't let their size fool you. These truth-seeking orbs are in another. Yeah, league. you can't even touch the them, man. Ten tails is strong enough to wipe continents. Unless you're Naruto. Of and the orbs can be shaped into weapons that will completely disintegrate anything they come into contact with. Not even ninja resurrected through Edo Tensei like Minato could regenerate limbs lost to the truth-seeking orbs, which means they had to erase his literal spirit itself. Madara's power was so insane he was considered comparable to the original Sage of Six Paths, the dude who helped create the friggin' moon. And when Madara created meteors, they were large enough to show up against the curvature of the Earth. 
Measuring their size and estimating the height at which Madara lifted them, they'd have to possess a potential energy of at least 372 petatons of TNT. That's a lot of petatons. To keep up with eight gates, guy, who kicked hard enough to bend space. Mudderay even has an attack where he hawks light speed loogies. Considering even yeah, and now it will dodge that shit. On par with light timing ninja, we know Ten Tails Madara would have to be significantly faster thanks to the Ten Tails' power. With virtually no one left to oppose him, Madara's plot was finally in the end game. He awakened the Rin Sharingan, and with the God Tree summoned, he cast the infinite Tsukuyomi, spreading the tree's roots across the entire planet and capturing every single person in the world. This would enslave all of humanity in an endless dream world free of conflict forever peace through total domination manipulating this tree with his yep, chakra, he fucking did it physically spreading its roots through and around the entire earth in mere moments estimating the tree's mass and the speed at which the roots were moved his chakra must have released an energy exceeding one yoda ton of tnt and this was with just one jutsu is there a character that could possibly even touch madara uchiha Kishimoto himself didn't even know. Madara's power was so overwhelming, the only thing that could take him down was treachery. Even the man with the magic eyes couldn't see that coming. All that I know everybody says it, but I'm going to say it as well. That is such a bullshit thing, by the way. Madara was hyped up to be this, like, incredible shinobi, which he is. An absolute powerhouse, which he was. And he finally comes back which has been, you know, hinted at and theorized for ages, just to be everything that everybody thought he would be, an absolute fucking dominating powerhouse. Like, the first time he shows up, he decimates the entire Shinobi Alliance, which was badass, by the way. I don't give a shit if he's the bad guy. And then he gets even stronger, then even stronger, then even stronger, and then you're like, shit, how are they actually going to defeat him? And then Zetsu. An aloe vera fucking tree. An aloe vera tree. Goddamn stabs him in the back. I know, like, he doesn't have a presence. Eh. So, Madara probably didn't even realize, you know, he thought he was part of his will, but he's not, he's part of Kaguya's will. La, 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 la. You know, doing all that and just stabs him in the back, and that's it, it's over with. Until, obviously, Naruto and Sasuke and Sakura and Kakashi beat Kaguya. And then you do see Madara again for a little while. Hash oh, well, actually, <laughs> I'm talking about the part that's on the screen now uh, when they defeat him and then Hashirama goes over and they have a, they have a talk, they, they reconcile. Uh, and then obviously he just dies. So such a goddamn bullshit thing. Nobody wanted her here. Nobody. What was left was his old friend Hashirama, there to comfort him in his final moments. Just like Romeo and Juliet. Or never was there a What's this guy's problem with Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> of Hashirama and his mother, bro. I read it in iambic pentameter. Is there a gas leak in here? Now the real fun begins. Now the real question. Would you like my clones to use the Susano too? One of its leading Shinigami was set to be executed under suspicious circumstances. A band of humans from the living world had invaded to save her, and Sosuke Aizen, captain of the 5th division of the Gotei 13, was dead. Murdered. <gasps> but, but no. The mastermind could have been behind all this. He'd have to be a galaxy-brained 5D chess master. The man responsible was, in fact, Sosuke Oh Aizen. my god. About the man's past, I just didn't see it happen. A man, a human man, but a soul reaper. These Shinigami are spiritual beings who ferry lost souls to the afterlife. He's pretty sexy, like, I must say, though. Evil in the living world. They're badass anime wizard Grim mm, Reaper swords. That's all it took, baby. From a nerd to a cool. chad. I mean, just look at those glasses, dork. But this Clark Kent was harboring a secret. Aizen had spent years attempting to develop the means to ultimate power, ruining the lives of many of his colleagues via his twisted experiments. Oh, so when Aizen does it, he's a super villain. But when you do it to me, it's shut the hell up, Boomstick. You're under NDA, and I know about the stuff you've done. As a Shinigami, Aizen's body is made of Reishi, being spirit matter, and empowered by Rare Yoku, being spirit energy. Entities made of Reishi are completely invisible to anyone without specific supernatural awareness, though a Shinigami's body is still tangible and can be damaged normally. And with his Rei Ryoku energy, Aizen can create incredibly powerful blasts. He's so strong, weaker beings will literally disintegrate if they get too close to him. 
This is due to his Rayatsu, a localized spiritual pressure exerted as a result of his enormous power. He also knows tons of Kido, or spells. He can create force fields, bend the light around him to make him impossible to detect, fire concentrated bolts of lightning, and absorb the energy from his surroundings to make giant-ass energy dragons. Perhaps his deadliest Kido yep. is Kurohitsugi. After Kurohitsugi, that's what it is. Yes, that's the one I was trying to think of. Also, um, I, I, I've been re-watching Bleach with uh, my fiancé, uh, and she keeps stopping watching it. And it's fury. And it, I, we just got past the uh, Ichigo versus Ulkiora fight. And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get to the eyes and part, man. I just want to watch the fight again. God damn it, Demi, what are you doing? But, but um, yeah, that is a, a badass moment, though, when uh, Shinji walks past. I mean, it's all part of Aizen's plan. You know, he was expecting him to do it or whatever. But yeah, when he's just like, oh, Aizen, like, why are you hiding or whatever it is that he says. And just like grabs the air and just rips it off. And Aizen just sat there. God, he's badass. In extensive incantations, so many cool parts in Bleach. In an enormous black coffin that distorts space and time and tears its victims apart. Aizen's plotting finally came to fruition during the invasion of the Soul Society, where he faked his death using his greatest weapon, his Zanpakuto, Kyoka Swigetsu. A Shinigami Zanpakuto is a magical sword that possesses a sentient spirit. Kyoka Soigetsu gives Aizen complete control over his victim's senses the instant they lay eyes on the sword. This complete hypnosis traps its victims in a nearly perfect illusion that Aizen can manipulate at will. Oh, Momo, poor thing. Immune to attacks while his opponents are sitting ducks. It's so strong that it kept a group of Exo Reapers known as the Visor trapped for over a hundred years without them even knowing it. It's one of the most broken powers ever and the definition of anime bullshit. But it was <laughs> yeah, all true. He perfected his ultimate creation, the Hogyoku. The Hogyoku. An immensely powerful reality warping device that, quote, materializes the user's wishes. In Aizen's case, it realized his desire to become the strongest being in the universe. With it, he can heal any of his wounds, even when half his body is vaporized. And more importantly, uh, it actually increases his power Poor guy, man. through evolution by turning him into a horrifying Like a B-Tech Itachi. A being eventually strong enough to dethrone and replace the Soul King, the deity that controls the cosmic balance. Even a minor disruption to the Soul King's influence led to the three worlds of Earth, the Soul Society, and Hueco Mundo to start physically collapsing. That it implied that the Soul King has to be outputting enough energy to hold all these places together at all times. Considering each should be roughly the same size, this would require an energy of over 140 zettatons of TNT. That's a lot, I think, right? To vaporize mountains as a side effect of a sword swing. His casual energy blasts can disintegrate huge chunks of the earth, and he can take on armies with... No, no, no. I'm not, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it, but that wasn't Aizen that did that. Aizen thought he did that, but that was Ichigo's swings that decimated those mountaintops, right? I might be, I might be remembering it wrong, but I'm fairly certain, because he starts giving this, he's constantly trying to warm up Ichigo. Ichigo grabs him by the face and flings him away, which, by the way, absolutely sexy. And then he's like, oh, I see you. That's why I can't read your spiritual pressure, like you've, You've discarded it and, and regained, well, well, doubled basically your uh, your physical traits and everything. This is why you're, you were quick and you grabbed my face and blah, 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 blah. And every part of the fight, he's just constantly like, oh, I see why, why you did this. It's because of this. And, you know, he's trying to make himself sound like a badass. And he's like, as you can see by a single swing of my sword is, you know, completely decimating the mountaintops. But then I'm fairly certain at the end, when he realizes Ichigo's, you know, way stronger than him at this point. It's Ichigo that, that did all that. Or am, I, or am I remembering that wrong? I could be. Just I could Ratsu be. Alone. He even defeated the rest of the Gote 13 without so much as breaking a sweat. So he should be way stronger than Soul Society heavy hitters like Kenpachi, who sliced this 120 kilometer wide asteroid to pieces. That's roughly the width of Great Britain. An asteroid Damn. this size would have to carry a kinetic energy of at least 44 petatons of TNT. And Aizen was so badass, he literally transcended other Shinigami in power. He was in a whole other dimension from the rest of them. Until he fought Ichigo Kurosaki. The battle we've been waiting for. Way he this, just the one up them every army, time. Ichigo was already as fast as lightning. And by this point, after all his power boosts, he'd even be faster than light. 
No! God damn it! Adverts! What are you playing at? Hell, even Negatory. Like this lady can dodge light beams. Though their fight was epic, Ichigo had transcended the Shinigami as well. And even Aizen himself, feeding upon his insecurity, oh, Mugetsu. the Hokoku abandoned Aizen, who was quickly defeated and imprisoned within the bottommost level of the Soul Society's prison. Aizen was left alone. His great power he sacrificed so much to achieve was gone forever. That motherfucking chair, though. Or was it? Somehow he ended up getting even stronger than before. But what made him so strong? Could it be the chair? It's not the chair. <laughs> it's the chair. It could theoretically be due to the chair's restraints keeping his Ryatsu from properly releasing, building it up within him until he was stronger in base than he was at his previous max. Nah, it's definitely the chair. And, ooh, since the chair could still hold him after he got stronger, wouldn't that make it even stronger than him? Even stronger than the Soul King? All hail the mighty chair summon! Right, the chair needs a spin-off, goddammit. Alright, this chair needs a goddamn spin-off. He even managed to hold his own against the Quincy Warlord, Yua, who absorbed the power of the Soul King himself. He even used Kyoka Swing. Is that how it's pronounced? Him. And Yuha's a dude who can literally see every possible future all at the same time. All according to Keikaku, bitches. And after standing among the gods themselves, Aizen returned to captivity and pondered the meaning of his existence. Even trapped in a prison, sealed off in a different dimension with a 20,000 year sentence, he remains the most dangerous being in the world. Who knows what schemes are brewing behind those cold, calculating eyes. No compassion, no empathy, only the drive for power. No one has ever stood at the top. Neither you nor me from now on. I alone will stand at the top. Daddy! All right, the combatants are set and we've run the... I will quickly say, though, in terms of Bleach, um, Aizen, super smart dude, you know, he orchestrated this whole thing, but uh, during that end fight, it technically wasn't even Ichigo that defeated him. Ichigo constantly one-upped him, and the, Hyo the Hogyo Q, I'm fairly certain, would have constantly just kept evolving him to maybe the point where Ichigo... Well, actually, no, sorry, after Mugetsu, uh, Ichigo lost all of his powers. He, he gave that up to use that one move, which I don't even really feel like he had to at that point. He definitely had the upper hand. But, um, yeah, at, at, at the end, he did come back together, and he would have probably killed Ichigo, considering he has no Reishi anymore. It was... Uh, it was Kisuke. It was Kisuke that, that outsmarted him. And uh, I don't remember what ability that was, those, like, red arrows that go through him. Yeah, that, that was all to do with Kisuke. Just fucking outsmarting the dude. So. Data through all possibilities. But first, if you want the confidence of an anime oh, superhero, here we go. check out Blue Chew. Sponsoring the show. But Thank right you for now, sponsoring Blue Chew. Time for a death battle! The services are wonderful. Oh my god. Oh, it's pixels! Look at that, how cute. Uh huh. You can see me. I can see everything. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> Quick, take the glasses off. Did you see that? I don't want to be that guy, but that's the wrong color blue. Well, that's an illusion. Nice. Also, he definitely had the running gun before, then went back to the Sharon gun. I'm fairly certain he can't do that. I'm pretty sure that was an animation error that they showed the running gun a bit too early. 
Not something you can just revert back to. My man got ripped all of a sudden, what the fuck? Yes. Yes. I love it. The thrill of battle. The pounding of my heart. The taste of my own blood. I love it. <laughs> Alright, so he's fucking crazy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my god. You almost had me there, you tricky bastard. Nothing escapes my illusions, human. No your place. So is this it? Is eyes in the winner? Or is this another illu- yeah, That looked pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie to you, that looked pretty fun cool. That, that, that end part was pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie to you. KO! Of course Madara won! He fake died twice for his 5D chess plan, while Aizen only fake died once. Aizen and Madara were extremely evenly matched in raw power and speed. By our calculations, Madara spreading the God Tree's roots with his chakra was about seven times more powerful than the best that Aizen could scale to with his rare Yoku. And both ended up being roughly as fast as each other. While there are a range of possible feats and numbers to go with to determine their limits, the point is, they're always going to be close to even. Which means the main thing that mattered here were their powers and how they countered each other. Madara's enormous variety of abilities eventually overwhelmed Aizen. While Soul Reapers like Aizen... I can guarantee you this isn't going to go down well. <laughs> the Renegon allowed Madara to see invisible spiritual beings like his own Limbo clones. Hell, the Renegon lets you see and remove human souls, and that's exactly what a Soul Reaper is. Both Chakra and Rare Yoku utilized spirit energy and operated in similar ways, being formed into attacks like Ninjutsu and Kido. That meant that Madara's ability to absorb Ninjutsu allowed him to nullify the vast majority of Aizen's range attacks and even dispel his force fields. And despite how OP Aizen's complete hypnosis was, Sharingan users can break out of illusions no sweat, even ones as powerful as Itachi's Sukuyomi. And since Madara can switch between the Rinnegan and the Sharingan at will, he'd be able to break out of an illusion anytime he wanted. Aizen's illusions are nearly perfect, but fellow Captain Unahana was able to subconsciously notice its flaws. With an eye as perceptive as the Sharingan, which can spot imperfections in Genjutsus all the time, it was only inevitable that Madara would be able to quickly break out. However, the same couldn't be said for Aizen, who never showed any resistance to the kind of mental illusions Madara can create. Even setting illusions aside, the sheer quantity of offensive options at Madara's disposal, whether it be his clones, meteors, or monsters summoned by the Rinnegan, kept Aizen constantly on the back foot. But none of that mattered if they couldn't kill each other, and both had pretty insane healing factors that could recover from just about anything, except for those pesky eight balls of doom. Madara's truth-seeking orbs were capable of completely molecularly annihilating spiritual beings and preventing them from regenerating. And again, Aizen was a spiritual being. That he was, but I, I was going to mention this before as well, but... I, I could be wrong about this, because um, obviously this, the, the truth-seeking orbs are like all five elements put together. Because there's the Keke... Is it a Keke Mora? It's Keke Tort as two, right? Keke Kenkai's two. Ikeke Torta is three. Ikeke Mora, I think, is four. And then whatever, whatever, the, the whatever. It's true to is all five elements put together. And, and I don't think you can just create those at will. Because Naruto couldn't. He had a set amount of them and he used them all during his fight with uh, Sasuke and also uh, Kaguya as well. And yeah, I'm fairly certain you, you can't just make those at will. And I'm fairly certain Madara used a lot of them during that fight to, to fight off those dragons. 
But then when he went back to normal, he had all like six or seven or however many years that he has. I could, again, could be remembering it wrong. I don't remember every single detail, but yeah. And Zaizen lacked the ability to do the same irreversible damage to Madara. The ghost of the Uchiha had exactly what he needed to put this actual ghost down for good. Aizen was an unbelievably overpowered foe, but Madara's own powers, illusions, and devastating truth-seeking orbs allowed him to crush the ex-Shinigami. Sosuke should have kept his Aizen the prize in... Do you feel any shame? <laughs> no, not at all. Moderately. Ha! Double pun. Suck it, Wiz. The winner is Madara Uchiha. All right. Well, I mean, this is technically now a second video because my dumb ass just stopped the recording and I have no, no idea why I just did that. Um, yeah, so we, we got it right. I, I'm, I was not confident on that one at all. Not, not, not at all because I always thought maybe the, the Bleach universe was stronger because I've, I've never understood people that like say, well, this universe is stronger than you, this universe. So if they fight, you know, that'll never happen. I mean, we'll just scale them both to like a universe. And just have them fight there. Like, shut up. But yeah, I, I I really don't know how I feel about that one. I'll always go with a narrator character because I'm super mega biased. Um, yeah. I, I I haven't checked it yet, but I can guarantee you that that whole comment section is a shit show of, you know, Bleach fans being like, that would never happen, all right? Aizen would have beat his ass. Aizen scales to this. He's done this, 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 and this. He's, he's, he's out of versal scale. A narrator character? Pff, pathetic. They, they can barely even destroy a continent. It's outrageous. And I'm like, all right, fucking weeb. Calm down. Calm your ass down. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go check it after this, though. It's good. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be extremely comical. Yeah, I'm... I'm uh... I'm interested to see what you guys think on that one. Do you think Madara deserved the win? Or, I don't know about you, but that last part with the illusions was fucking badass. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, I, I really don't know what to say. But yeah, um, I've, I've said but yeah about a million times now. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It does help massively, and I do massively appreciate it. And like I said, let me know in the comments if you think Madara deserved the win there. If you think... You know, Bleach characters are, are way stronger than narrator characters. Or if narrator characters are way stronger than Bleach characters, you let me know. I'm sure it'll start a war in my comment section too. Alright, well I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.